Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning about vertical angles. So let's get started with the following do now. In the diagram below, all three lines intersect at point A. If the measure of angle GAD is equal to 10x minus 15, then what are the values of x, y, and z? Notice that in this particular problem here, we do not know anything about the relationship of vertical angles. So the goal in today's lesson is to actually figure it out. So we want to use whatever previous postulates or theorems we know to solve this particular problem. So here we know that angle GAD is 10x minus 15. We also know that that the measure of angle EAC is equal to 7x plus 21. Where did we get the 7x? Well, we're just adding up the 3x over here and the 4x, and we add also the 21. Why am I looking at this particular angle, angle EAC? Well, let's look at the following here. We know that angle EAC and angle CAD, this one, um, they're a linear pair, right? So that means they're supplementary. But we also know that angle GAD and angle CAD are supplementary, correct? So basically, we have the following. Let's write this down. So we know that angle EAC and angle CAD are supplementary. We also know that angle GAD and CAD are supplementary. Why are they supplementary? As you remember from one of the previous videos, the reason is if the exterior sides of two adjacent angles are opposite rays, then the angles are supplementary. Now, what does that mean when you have two angles that are supplementary of the same exact angle, right? So here, that's the angle that they share. It's the same exact angle. Well, we also know that in this case, angle EAC and angle GAD must be congruent. So therefore, angle EAC is congruent to angle GAD. Because if two angles are supplements of the same angle, then the two angles are congruent. Now, the fact that the angles are congruent also means that they're equal in measure. And we know that's true by the definition of congruent angles. Now, all we need to do is substitute these angles in terms of x and solve for the value of x as follows. 7x plus 21 is equal to 10x minus 15 by the substitution postulate then we can say that 3x is equal to 36. And finally, x is equal to 12 by the division postulate. Okay, so we just figured out the value of x. How about y and z? Well, we know that the measure of angle GAD is equal to 10x minus 15. So let's substitute x equal to 12 and see what we obtain for the measure of angle GAD. So here we obtain a value of 105 degrees for the measure of angle GAD. And again, we just substitute it here. We also know that the measure of angle GAC is equal to the measure of angle GAD plus Y by the partition postulate. Then we substitute to obtain a value of Y is equal to 75. Now, how do we find the value of Z here? Well, let me erase this really quick here so you guys can see better. So to find the value of Z, we can now look at this entire angle here, which is angle BAF, right? Uh, we can figure out the value of the measure of angle BAC because we know that the x value is 12, right? So if we multiply 4 times 12, we obtain 48 degrees, okay? Um, we also know the value of y that we just calculated, which is 75 degrees, okay? So all we need to do is figure out how many degrees that is and divide by 3, okay? How do we do that? Well, we add it up and subtract it from 180. So again, here we have angle BAC is 48 degrees, angle CAD is 75, and we can find the angle DAF, which is 57. So how do we find Z? We simply divide 57 by 3 to obtain 19. And here's the work shown for finding the value of Z, okay? So now we got all the values. X equal to 12, Y is equal to 75, and Z is equal to 19 and we just solved the do now here. Now, the reason why we have this, because uh, we can actually simplify things here by using vertical angles instead of doing all this work here. 
And in the do now, we kind of showed that this is always true, that vertical angles are actually congruent. For example, if we look at this in the beginning, right, what we did here, we said that, that these two angles are both supplements of the same angle, right? Then we ended up stating that these two angles are congruent, angle EAC and GAD. Well, what kind of angles are these? Well, let's look at the diagram. Here we have angle EAC over here and we have angle GAD, right? If you, for example, um, remove line FAB, you just simply have vertical angles and that's the relationship here. So these are vertical angles, okay? So basically the proof that vertical angles are congruent is very simple. So let's say you're given line AB and line CD intersect at point E as shown in the figure here. By the way, that is an important given, okay? Because we need to know that line AB is a straight line and also line CD is a straight line. If that is not given, then we don't know if at this point E here, over here, uh, we wouldn't know if these are straight line because in the worst case scenario, you could have something like this, right? something that is uh, completely not straight line over here. So we cannot determine if these angles are congruent or not. So we want to prove here that angle AEC is congruent to angle DEB. So let's set up the statement reason table here. First, we state the given that line AB and line CD intersect at point E. Then we somehow have to state that these two angles over here are supplementary, okay? So let's do that. So here we have angle AEC is supplementary to angle AED because if the exterior sides of two adjacent angles are opposite rays, then the angles are supplementary. Similarly, uh, we can now state that this angle here, this angle is also supplementary to this angle. So the statement is angle DEB is supplementary to angle AED. Same reason as number two. And again, what do you notice here? Well, we have in step two that AEC is supplementary to angle AED. And in step three, we know that angle DEB is also supplementary to angle AED. So they're both supplements of the same angle and therefore they must be congruent. So if two angles are supplements of the same angle, then the two angles, angle AEC and angle DEB are congruent. And there you go, we proved it now. So what does this mean now? Well, it means that we have proven that this is now always true, right? That these two angles here, that are vertical angles, are always going to be congruent. So in the do now here, we had to do all this work using supplementary angles. Okay, from now on, we don't have to do this work anymore. We can just simply state the vertical angles are congruent and just simply solve it this way. And going back to the diagram here, it also means that the other pair of vertical angles are also congruent, okay? So we can say that these two are congruent as well, and that can be also proven in a very similar way. Now, please note the following, which is very important. There is a difference between the definition of vertical angles and the theorem pertaining to vertical angles. The definition does not talk about that they're congruent. The definition only specifies that they are vertical angles. It says here two angles are vertical if and only if the sides of one angle are opposite rays to the sides of the other angle. Okay, it just says, okay, look here, these are vertical angles here by the definition. That's it. Now, if you want to state that they're vertical and they're congruent, well, first you use the definition, but then you need to use the theorem and says, you know what? These are not only vertical, but they're also congruent according to the theorem, okay? Also very important in a statement reason table, do not just write a vertical angle theorem and that's it. Such a thing does not exist. You need to write out the entire conditional statement, which is if two angles are vertical angles, then they're congruent. So I hope you see what I'm getting to this, that first you want to define vertical angles, and after you define them, then you can state that they are congruent. Okay, so that's basically it for today's lesson. Again, 
Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.